This video will be the most simplified, yet comprehensive explanation for peptides that you will ever hear. So please, slow down, pay close attention to this video, take notes if you need to, but I want you to really think about what I'm talking about here. So feel free to slow the video down or rewatch certain sections, and you could always come back to this too and treat it like it's your own reference guide to how peptides work. Share the video with others and discuss it with your friends too. But look, what I want you to do is treat this video as if I'm right there in the room with you, giving you a complete rundown of this topic after years of refinement. Because if you understand this, you will understand things about human health and biology that most doctors and scientific researchers have not yet discovered, and your life can completely change for the better. So with that said, let's begin. Did you know that about 97% of our DNA is controlled by epigenetics plus the binding of other molecules such as peptides to DNA? This 97% consists of regulatory sequences that control the transcription of our genes. So what controls whether 97% of our genes are active or silenced at a given time? The methylation status. Normally about 70 to 80% of our CPG sites are methylated, which usually means inactive. But about 10% of our promoter regions are methylated, meaning most are active. But what if we could control if they are active or silenced and to what degree? That's where certain peptides, like Covenson's bioregulators, come in. Now you may have heard that these peptides are highly tissue specific, but there are some nuances to this. Covenson's primarily affect the organ or biological system in which they are derived from, but they do have some off targets as well, but these have all been shown to be beneficial. You'll see many examples of this as we go forward. But first, what is a peptide? A peptide is simply a chain of two or more amino acids linked together. Typically, peptides are less than 50 amino acids in length, although there are some exceptions, such as growth hormone, which is 191, and insulin, which is 51. All the peptides covered in this course are less than 50 amino acids long. What are Covenson's bioregulator peptides? Well, these usually consist of two to six amino acids in length and are known as bioregulators because they have been found to restore our biological processes to an optimized state. These peptides are all naturally produced in our body but in limited quantities, which decrease as we accumulate DNA damage, telomere shortening, and increased heterochromatin. This is what occurs with biological aging. Aging can accelerate under extreme factors in which the stress on our cells exceeds our biological defenses. It can be environmental toxins, nutritional inadequacies, or chronic stress. Our cells begin to lose identity, which slowly degenerates larger structures because protein synthesis decreases in our cells. And during the Cold War, premature aging among the Soviet soldiers was observed due to high levels of radiation exposure in missile silos, submarines, and supersonic jets. Let's take a closer look at what happens inside our cells. Inside our cells, we have DNA. This DNA is what gets packaged into nucleosomes and then chromatin fibers, and this becomes chromosome. So you can see in this image, we have our DNA. It even shows how it has these epigenetic markers, which are the methylation patterns in it. And we have these histone proteins right here. So imagine you have important papers stored inside a folder. You can open that folder and retrieve the papers. This is your euchromatin. It packages up the DNA so neatly that the gene can be accessed easily. But if there is a weight sitting on top of that folder, you can't easily open the folder. This is your heterochromatin. It packages up the DNA very tight, making that gene accessibility difficult. This is what happens over time with aging. But those genes are still there. We just need to remove the weight from the folder. That's what bioregulator peptides can do. Now, when bioregulator peptides bind to these histone proteins, they can induce deheterochromatization, increasing euchromatin. This allows genes in our DNA to be accessed more readily, and this effect can last for some time. Additionally, these peptides bind directly to precise regions within the DNA. For example, pinealon and vilon bind within the code of the FNDC5 gene. This is in a promoter region, which means it expresses or activates that gene. It can be hypothesized that this gene will be activated more strongly by Vylon than Pinealon because it has more binding sites in the promoter region. By binding these DNA sites, it initiates RNA polymerase, which transcribes the protein or enzymes that are coded by that gene. In this case, 
FNDC5 codes for Irisen, which we will discuss later. One of the things Irisen can do downstream is increase telomere length. So this study was investigating if epitalin also does this, because it's the main peptide known to extend our telomeres. But epitalin doesn't work this way. Instead, it binds to a different gene called TERT, which stimulates telomerase enzymes to increase telomere length. And here's a 3D model of what epitalin looks like when it binds to DNA. To recap, these bioregulator peptides can make the genes in our DNA more accessible. They can also bind directly to the genes in our DNA to increase their transcription, and depending on what genes are activated, you get a lot of beneficial effects. For example, the telomerase activation by epitalin would extend our telomeres, allowing for more cell divisions to take place. You can see it on the chart here. Now the benefits that come with different genes being activated can include things such as improved cognition, organ function, athletic abilities, enhanced muscle growth, fat loss, healing, and so on. Each peptide is unique in what it does, which is why we will be covering them all. Since these peptides stimulate healing, improve chromatin structure, and lead to DNA methylation changes, as was proved by Bill Lawrence's studies in, in which biological age got reversed according to the Horvath clock testing and the telomere testing, we know that these peptides would exert some long-term effects. Now, in Dr. Lawrence's study, which is still ongoing by the way, it's been ongoing for I believe five years now, there was a decrease in biological age of 12.32 years over a two-year period on his peptide protocol, which I am attaching as a file to the last module in the charts, as I mentioned. I don't know the exact average age of his participants, but I do know they were older. And I also know that in a lot of the other Covenson studies, we see indices of biological age being reversed and telomeres being lengthened. It's just that there hasn't been a really long-term study assessing biological age reversal until now with Dr. Lawrence, which which is what makes his trials so exciting. Now, what makes these Covenson bioregulator peptides different from larger peptides, or even small molecule drugs? Well, not all peptides and small molecules form bonds with the DNA. Some can, but their target is usually on the receptors in proteins, either on the cell's surface or inside the cell. There are some larger peptides that just aren't known if they bind to DNA or not because they haven't been studied that far. But Covenson's peptides have been shown to interact with DNA and histones. This is why they are a unique class of peptides, and because they are naturally occurring, they are practically free from side effects and have a tendency to bioregulate, that is, to change the gene expressions up or down as needed for correction and optimization, at baseline and in diseased or unhealthy states. Here you can see a cell. The DNA, histones, and chromatin are in the nucleus of this cell, but there are proteins and receptors on the cell surface and in the cytoplasm. And I apologize if it's not listed here, but CD98HC is a protein on the cell surface that brings the lat transporters to the cell surface. Essentially, this enhances the transport of peptides into the cell. And there are two Covenson peptides that I know of right now they can act as superchargers on the CD98HC protein, meaning they enhance the effectiveness of other Covenson peptides they are combined with. This includes Vylon and Cartilax. Now this information is listed on the chart I provided for your reference in the last module, and you should double check it, because if I find another one before this course is finished, it will be listed there. And in general, water-soluble basic peptides are good at entering through the carbohydrate-rich outer layer of the cell membrane. Other lipid-soluble peptides diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane for a cell entry. So let's talk about the routes of administration for these peptides. Since these small Covenson peptides are taken up very easily by these transporters called LAT and PEPT transporters, they can be taken in different routes of administration and work such as orally, sublingually, intranasally, or injected. Now, most peptides in general are usually injected, but some can work intranasally if they have a low molecular weight. For example, peptides up to 6,000 Dalton's molecular weight have been delivered intranasally, although the bioavailability does decrease. Regardless of how Covenson's peptides are administered, they are still taken up by the LAT and PEP transporters, 
which are present on the cells, including in the nose to brain barrier, stomach, and the GI tract. So in Russia, we have what's called peptomaxis. These are prescription only and administered in a doctor's office by IV or intramuscular injection. The patient is usually sent home with cytogens, cytomaxes, or a combination of each. In Russia, you can purchase these over the counter, just like you can from distributors online. Now, the cytomaxes are naturally derived peptide extracts from a biological system of cattle less than one year old. They contain peptides up to 5,000 Dalton's molecular weight. Now, when these were being investigated through chromatography, small di, tri, and tetrapeptides were identified, and one, or sometimes more, was chosen for each peptide extract. This became what is known as the cytogens. These are just a single peptide synthesized in the lab. So which one should you choose? Professor Covinson would say that cytogens often have a faster onset of effects, so they are good when you need acute help. Then he recommends switching to the equivalent cytomaxes later on, as he says these provide slower but more sustainable and far-reaching benefits. But as you go through this course, you will be able to make an educated decision based on your needs and desires. This has been Brendan Henry, the world's leading expert in peptide science, with the most scientifically supported peptide mastery course online at peptides.unyieldingvigor.com. It covers 66 peptides in detail on how to use them for your goals, along with bonuses like quick reference sheets, PDFs, transcripts, citations, and more. I created it out of the sheer passion that I have for peptides, and because I was fed up with the low quality and incorrect information being put out there by others. I am also currently developing the world's most powerful genetic analysis tool, currently in beta for my coaching clients. This tool takes things to a whole new level by providing the most complete picture of your genes, which is necessary for maximum optimized outcomes in my coaching programs, which I call molecular bioenhancement. This enables us to provide complete transformations for our clients in almost any domain they want, whether it's high-performing CEOs who want enhanced cognition, greater memory recall, razor-sharp focus, greater charisma, more assertiveness, and higher energy, or elite athletes aiming to perform at their highest level in strength, muscle gain, fat loss, hand-eye coordination, recovery, and cellular energy. We could also help individuals who know they're capable of more but have been held back by subpar genetics, injury, or disease. We could regenerate organs, reverse aging, enhance looks, optimize hormones, and create a new, higher-functioning brain and body, achieving results like something out of a sci-fi movie. This is what Professor Vladimir Kovinson was doing with elite athletes and peptides, as Irina Viner, the head coach of the Russian Rhythmic Gymnastics team, has stated in a video that I translated into English on my channel. Her team won five gold medals in a row. Now, if you want to benefit from my molecular bioenhancement coaching, just go to unyieldingvigor.com slash coaching. But my spots are greatly limited because I put a great level of care into each client. So sign up now if you're interested.